I'm Walton Pantland. Welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly update. This week, we're at Northern College in South Yorkshire, where we're attending the Global Labour Institute Summer School. We're meeting lots of interesting trade unionists from around the world and hearing their stories about the inspiring struggles that they're taking part in. يعني خليني فعلا زي ما قال صديقنا العزيز الاستاذ احمد وهو واحد what happened is that after the revolution there happened to the, the SCAF, the Supreme Council for Armed Forces passed on a legislation which allows political parties to associate which was something not possible before the revolution however this legislation um, is exclusive uh, because it, it, it prevents and it, uh, it doesn't allow workers to do so. Why? How so? The legislation dictates that any kind of political parties based on sectoral or uh, group-oriented uh, uh, interests are not allowed. Also, the staff refused, like, uh, like we explained earlier, to ratify a draft law allowing for the freedom of association of uh, 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 workers. So this explains quite well that the SCAF is generally anti the new independent trade unions movement. After the revolution, the, is the Islamists created five uh, political parties. The political Islam created five political parties. The most prominent or, or popular is the Freedom and Justice Party, which is the Muslim Brotherhood uh, political wing. And uh, also there are the Salafists uh, political parties. There are three political parties on this level. Uh, and the most popular of them is called the Noor. Uh, I think you hear of uh, the names. And also uh, the, the other, um, uh, so now we have four. The fifth one is, um, is in somewhere in the middle between this, the, 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 the so-called liberals and uh, the Islamists. It's called the Wasat party. Yes, sir. And, uh, uh, and on this, uh, the other hand, there, are, there have been two uh, uh, one center left party, which is the Social Democratic Party, and it explains by, you know, by its name uh, what it stands for, and uh, also and it's it's close to the to the uh, principles of Social Democratic parties in Europe, but m maybe with some differences, to be more compatible. <coughs> with it. Also, there is a, a more leftist party called the Popular Alliance uh, for Leftists. And there are two liberal parties, um, one called Free Egyptians uh, and uh, another one called the, uh, Egypt the Free. Egypt the Free is led by Hamzaoui, so that you know, when you hear his name, you understand that it's, it's, he has a liberal party and not uh, a center-left one. And also, the, the, the Free Egyptians is led by uh, uh, many businessmen, and the most uh, popular of them is called Sawiris. Also, there is... Uh, uh, um, an Arab nationalist party, it's called the Karama, and the leader of this party used to be, he no longer is the leader, but the leader of this party used to be uh, um, uh, Hamdin Sabahi, who was the third runner, he got the third highest votes in the presidential elections. He's neither a liberal nor uh, uh, an Islamist, he's just a national Arab. Uh, some trust, uh, Trotskians in Egypt tried to establish a, a, a party by the name of the Labour Party, but it failed. It didn't work well. Um, it, 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 you should know that now, by, uh, with Morsi being president, a power <coughs> struggle, or the real power struggle, is, uh, is coming to uh, 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 the front lines. It's between um, the Islamists, uh, and the Muslim Brotherhood per se, and the military. Uh, now there is there is a there is a, a, a struggle which which the the labor pro the labor movement has to define itself in uh, struggle struggling with both and not taking sides of course because both are as autocratic as they mm -hmm. can. Uh, the new independent unions uh, were uh, were and are still battling on the front lines of uh, which have to do with uh, bettering workers' uh, wages and conditions and work conditions and what have you. And therefore, they did not really uh, uh, reflect uh, on how to collectively vote during the parliamentary elections. And uh, <coughs> despite the fact that there were parties who represent workers' interests uh, to a large extent, to a larger, at least to a larger extent than all the others. And th these parties were the Social Democrats and the Popular Alliance, the leftist party. And, and in the... What happened in the presidential elections is that 
uh, workers started to realize this problem, that they have not decided to vote collectively, and they have tried to, uh, 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 more or mostly, with the platforms given for reflections uh, on, uh, on political behavior and translation into votes, they decided to, or mostly decided to vote for Hamdin Sabahi, who, who was the third uh, uh, with the most votes. The Muslim Brotherhood, you, you need to know that the Muslim Brotherhood is not as powerful as the international media tries to portray to Europe and the United States because the United States are fine with the Muslim Brotherhood taking over as long as they satisfy um, yeah, their interests in Egypt. So uh, the, 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 the image which is reflected in the international media is not very true and we can easily uh, understand that by reading closely into the voting behavior of Egyptians uh, throughout the course or between the, the time period uh, of uh, the parliamentary elections and the presidential elections. What happened is that the, the votes for Islamists generally dropped by 50% in the presidential elections. If you look closely at the numbers, what happened is, but how did the Islamists win then? Because it's not like in, in Europe and in the States, it's not a, a, a <coughs> election between two candidates. There were five candidates. And hence, even though people were, uh, uh, were uh, dro the voting to the Islamists dropped by 50%, they were, th th they were scattered between four, uh, three potentially good ones. And that's the problem. What happened is that, and the reason behind this dif uh, 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 voting differential is that the Muslim Brotherhood or the political Islamic forces in general have been exposed to the public, the real essence of them, the, away from the populist rhetoric which they use when they, went, the, when they uh, 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 controlled the parliament. What happened is that during the, the, the three months or four months of uh, parliamentary uh, assemblies, the Islamists uh, Islamists only focused on issues such as, oh, will the loan we will have from Europe to better the infrastructure uh, uh, of health and education in some villages, is it haram or halal? Is it uh, uh, um, uh, accepted by God or not? Is it uh, religiously acceptable or not? They did not at all discuss how to best utilize such loan, or uh, um, how this? What are the conditions of this loan? The, the the rhetoric they used was, well, is this accepted, acceptable by God or not? And this exposed them. This is one example. Also, uh, Salafis or the extreme Islamists in Parliament also said, said uh, uh, discussed stuff like we shouldn't really teach English to our kids in school because we only need Arabic and we don't know we need the outside world and people understand that this is not true they're not <laughs> they, they know that this is really stupid and this is another example we're, 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 we're telling you the, the examples which you can actually find uh, 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 references to in the media and also there was um, this issue of lowering the marriage age Islamists tend to break down every problem in society and, and, and saying that women are the, the, the reason for any problem, for any economic problem, for any political problem, and so forth. And hence when they brought, but people are not sure of that. People try to get, give them the benefit of the doubt, but, but when they saw that uh, up front, they, they were just disenchanted and, and upset. The thing is, these issues were raised by the, the, the Salafis, not the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood just were passive and inefficient and also horrible and so on other levels. And this explains why uh, 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 the voting uh, 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 for the Muslim Brotherhood during the presidential elections, yes, dropped by 50%, but also there were, voting for the, there were some votings for them. Okay? Uh, to sum up, it's not a problem of how strong or not strong is the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, we have to admit that they are, of course, strong because they have 600,000 in membership and they have tons of money which we have only to speculate where their sources, what, what the, the sources are. We can think Gulf, Qatar, you know. Uh, and this money is not used in... in uh, putting up commercials uh, uh, for the Muslim Brotherhood in the streets. It's used to monopolize the retail market for basic commodities. And hence, they actually, they, what they're doing since the revolution is that to make 
the, the worst use of uh, uh, the people in need of basic commodities such as sugar, rice, uh, uh, oil, and so forth, to 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 make them and to have them access these commodities at, at with no costs at all in return for them for the people to trust them and just turn at the polling stations uh, uh, to to vote for them and uh, the, the 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 people uh, 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 have are to realize sooner or later but hopefully sooner that they are not for the empowerment question and with the trickle down question and uh, they are more for the trickle down effects thing stupid thing and on the other hand with regards to the <coughs> civil political forces and the progressive political forces like um, our friend here said uh, earlier in the morning there are 10 leaders uh, with 10 different uh, 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 ideas and we get to dispute uh, over <coughs> stupid questions <laughs> and not to collectively take action and uh, 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 what, what uh, Kamel argues is that <coughs> if the labor <coughs> movement decides to collectively be, be part of this political equation, then they will be able to uh, uh, help those leaders, those <coughs> leaders to come together and have a more coherent uh, 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 formulation of what needs to be done. <coughs> but what is the reality? in the streets of Athens is the reality of um, having more than 20,000 homeless people, having 52% uh, of young people unemployed, uh, having one of the highest rates of unemployment in Europe, 20, almost 23%, having more or less 3,000 commit suicides, uh, which is more or less 40% rise in the suicide uh, rate since uh, 2010, having 60,000 small companies closed and about 60,000 more to close in the next uh, months, uh, having uh, uh, wide uh, spectrums of workers not being paid uh, for months because their companies cannot uh, afford to do so. So we have a messy reality which is very, very tough for many, many people. And this affects, of course, this situation affects trade union uh, strategies. As I said in the morning, and I will finish with that because you know, in order <coughs> to leave space for everybody to ask, in Greece we had a full, a complete, let's say, course of uh, action and resistance. Strike, <coughs> protest, <coughs> occupy, and vote. We had 15 general strikes, many more general strikes at company level and occupations of government offices, the Greek Indignados movement occupying space, which means the, basically the, the square. We have the rise of uh, Facebook uh, groups and other social media groups and uh, associations that are against uh, the austerity, huge protests, and all of those these activities resulting also in the rise of Syriza because Syriza was in the eyes of the, let's say, according to what the, the elections of the results, is the main agent of the anti-austerity movement uh, in Greece. So I think trade union strategies will be influenced by the reality that uh, ordinary people face in their houses, the melancholy, the depression, how tough is... Uh, everything is affected by how tough are the situation in its uh, family. Something that is obvious, though, at the moment, and uh, what became very, very obvious in the last two years with the uh, emergence of the Greek uh, crisis, is that we have internal divisions in the unions. We have the emergence of uh, radical unionism in the urban uh, areas of Athens and uh, Salonika. <coughs> and we had uh, also lately uh, the rise of C uh, fractions, trade union fractions that are affiliated to Syriza, uh, that they get now the second position instead of the third or fourth position. So we have gradually a transformation of the balance of power inside trade unions and the rise of a new militant radical unionism outside the main territory of the mainstream uh, unionism. I don't believe that uh, national strategies are efficient anymore. Uh, because uh, we see a lot of similarities and we cannot say like in the past 
let's say, seven, eight years ago. It has to do with Central and Eastern Europe. We West Europeans are different. <coughs> or it has to do with the South, and the, the, the North is different. So I would say that uh, a few points are very important in the trade union agenda in the future, uh, not postponing it and, and uh, uh, using uh, this unique global uh, widespread prost protest movement, because this is the time. Uh, uh, the crisis pro pro produced uh, revolutions, and the crisis produced uh, also uh, unbelievable raising of consciousness of people and will to participate, especially young people and some other groups. Uh, yes, we do organize uh, uh, the oil workers, but we also organize uh, aluminium and uh, plastic factories and uh, even dry cleaners. Uh, but right now, there, is, uh, there has been negotiations uh, with uh, my union and also another union without... Um, it's a different organization. But actually, it's the first time these two unions have come together uh, and shown strength uh, in such manner that uh, we've um, yeah, uh, basically managed to uh, irritate uh, one of the biggest oil companies uh, in Norway in a very uh, easy sense, we can say. Um, and they, uh, for I think it's now three weeks ago, uh, went uh, on strike, or my union and the SAFE, which is the other union, uh, with 710 people uh, taken out of work on four different um, units or platforms. And um, before we really got to the point of uh, doing the strike, uh, our counterpart, the employers organization, which is called OLF, uh, the oil uh, uh, labor organization, uh, they went on lockout, which basically means that they wanted to stop all production of gas and oil. Uh, and we only wanted to, first of all, strike on the oil and not the gas. The reason we wanted to do that uh, is because we wanted to avoid the government from stopping the strike. Uh, because we know from history and from experience that um, our government has a tendency to uh, uh, use a law that we have in Norway which is uh, allowing them to stop a strike when it's uh, for a risk of health and security measures which in the oil sector obviously it's not I mean uh, it's not a hospital it's it's oil that's going to be there tomorrow, and we can take it up tomorrow. So um, we are very disappointed, actually, and um, the reason we are disappointed is because our government is a uh, socialist government, socialist government, and um, we would prefer that they stood uh, side by side in our demands for. Uh, keeping the pension agreement that we've had with this company, which is actually uh, partly state-owned as well. So.